So topic of this presentation today, um, how we, and when I say we, we at Spring Languages, Spring Spanish are helping over 15,000 people learn Spanish um, without memorizing word lists and grammar rules, an introduction to conversation-based chunking. That's the topic for today. Everything will become clear. Uh, we're going to learn some Spanish today um, and, uh, and also methodology to learn Spanish and other languages too. So who am I? I'm Luke. Van Vive, that's my last name. I'm from Belgium. Uh, my mother tongue is Dutch. I'm a, a linguist, an interpreter, uh, polyglot. I like learning languages. Um, also an entrepreneur. So I founded two language learning companies, co-founded one. One is my own. One is more uh, focused on language learning methodology, more about what we're going to talk about today. Uh, I've written a book about chunking, conversation-based chunking, which you can see here. The photo you see there is at Langfest in Montreal. Maybe some of you know um, uh, Montreal uh, and maybe Langfest as well. Uh, so, so, so that's one part. The other part is uh, Spring Languages, which I'm representing today, um, which is a company I have co-founded with Gabriel Gelman, which you might know. Uh, he's been involved with Expo Lingua as well, which Pachelt and Nets become. So maybe you've heard from him before. Um, and together we, uh, yeah, we create a lot of language learning content. We teach people languages with chunks, specific languages, Spanish and English at the moment. We'll do more in the future. So yeah, that's what we do. And um, just to make sure um, that you're in the right place and that this session will be useful for you, I think it will be if you recognize the following statements. So if you're learning Spanish, but no matter how hard you work on memorizing word lists and grammar rules and then maybe learning all the verb conjugations, which is especially uh, challenging in Spanish, right? No matter how much time you spend on that, whenever you end up in a conversation, you still feel like you're translating in your head word for word from your mother tongue when you're speaking Spanish. Maybe you also feel like you draw a blank all the time and that you just forget everything you've learned. Um, maybe you feel tongue-tied, something that a lot of people feel as well. And then once you actually, you know, manage to, 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 to string together a sentence in Spanish, then the other person replies and you have difficulties understanding native speakers and what they say back to you. Right? Does that sound familiar? Maybe let me know in the chat. Uh, it probably is for many of you. Hmm? Hola, oh, I see there's a lot of people here. Good, good to see there are so many people. So this is probably familiar because it's familiar to almost all uh, language learners, right? Also to me. And, um, and yeah, that's, that's fine. I mean, it's, 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 it's a normal experience. Uh, but for me, five or six years ago, uh, a lot of changed, actually. I don't feel this that often anymore when I learn languages. And it coincided with uh, me discovering a different way of learning languages, uh, which we're going to talk about today, uh, chunking. And that's the one that, we've, um, that I've been developing over the past five or six years. So what is conversation-based chunking? In a nutshell, a four-step methodology that allows you to wait, let me just move the chat because it's in, a, in my way, to learn Spanish and other languages without getting a fossilized brain, and I'll get to that in a second, what that means, without translating in your head and without having to memorize word lists and grammar rules. And this might sound like a far-fetched dream, or maybe it sounds um, yeah, like something that, 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 that you won't really believe, or you think, well, this is probably just like any other um, method for language learning. If you feel that way, I understand. I would also feel that way, but I inv invite you to you know, keep an open mind and, 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 and try to see if maybe, maybe this, this whole chunking thing, maybe you've been doing it subconsciously already. This is something that I've uh, heard from a lot of people. Once they see what we talk about here, it's almost like, like a mindset shift like the missing link in their language studies or an aha moment. Uh, like Ignacio here, for example, who said like, yeah, well, I'm always skeptical about any new revolutionary method for language learning or whatever. But I have to say that Lucas is convincing me, which I was happy about, of course, thanks Ignacio. But he says it's because um, I experienced what he says on my skin, right? So he really experienced this already before we even talked about chunking, conversation-based chunking. He knew it was true or it worked for him because he was already doing it. And there's also Kat here who says, um, I live in Germany, but I work in English. I've been really struggling to learn German over the past few years. So she was learning German. She did a workshop about chunking. And she says, um, yeah, I leave now with a renewed sense of excitement and hope, uh, trying to shift what's been holding her back. And that's what I want for you today as well, right? So we're going to, um, yeah, talk about uh, Spanish, chunks in Spanish. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how you can uh, learn Spanish with chunks and without learning uh, grammar. And I hope you leave with a renewed sense of excitement and hope today as well. 
that you too can can learn Spanish and can um, yeah you know like like really learn a language without all of the frustration and the hassle that often comes with learning languages right um, so like I said uh, we're going to do a demonstration a little bit as well and we're going to use some learning materials in Spanish uh, to show you how chunking works um, you can download these for free of course. Um, the practice lesson will come in an MP3 file with a PDF uh, with some flashcards as well, and also the slides that we use today. Uh, we'll make all of that available and at the end of the presentation. So there'll be a link at the end of the presentation that you can, um, yeah, where you can download all the material. So no need to take notes unless you want to, of course. Y, um, yeah, vamos a empezar. No, let's get started. And to do so, uh, to explain to you why chunking works so well and what it is. We first need to take a look at what holds you, what's holding you back by learning languages the traditional way. Many people don't, don't realize this, but there is a li little known linguistic phenomenon that's, that's holding most people back when they're learning a language. And it's called brain fossilization. This is quite a dramatic uh, photo, I know. <laughs> um, I don't know if any, one of you, any of you know what fossilization is. Maybe you've heard of it before, maybe you haven't, uh, but it will make total sense. Uh, I'll explain to you uh, what it is um, how you can um, uh, avoid it. Anna says fossilized errors. That's exactly what it is, right? So what is brain fossilization? And why is it important that you know what it is so you can recognize it? Well, uh, here's a definition from the British Council. Fossilization refers to the process in which incorrect language becomes a habit and cannot easily be corrected. In other words, if you make the same mistakes in Spanish or any language you're speaking, often enough, especially when you're a beginner, You'll keep making that mistake forever and it's incredibly hard to get rid of mistakes that have fossilized like this literally fossilized right so how does that work or how does that happen and why does it happen more with uh, traditional language learning methods i'll show you uh, it happens through what i call a recipe for language learning disaster step one would be learning 500 or 1000 or the 2000 most frequent words so learning a lot of word lists isolated words where you just have like a whole pile of words that you try to cram into your head, right? Of course, with these words, you can't do anything yet. So um, you need to learn the grammar, right? You learn grammar rules so you know where to put which word uh, in the sentence, um, how to structure your sentences, etc. Then often the next piece of advice that people get is, well, start speak Spanish from day one or any language you're learning, right? You know the words, you know some grammar rules already, but not that much anymore, but people understand you anyway. You'll get over your fear of speaking. You'll make a lot of mistakes, but it doesn't really matter um, uh, because you know you learn and people still understand you and it's fine to make mistakes. And soon you'll start speaking fluently and you'll make fewer mistakes. So that often leads to disaster complete disaster why well because it takes ages to construct sentences that way right you draw a blank you get stuck in grammar rules you, you keep thinking about every single word that you want to say and if you learn that way well you make so many mistakes right it's like baking a cake when um, when you have all the ingredients for a cake you have the strawberries and the cream and everything you see here it looks like a delicious cake so you have all the ingredients you also have a recipe which would be your grammar rules but you still end up with something that looks like like this, <laughs> which probably would happen to me. I'm not a very good uh, cook or I don't bake good uh, cakes, but that's what often happens. You know the rules, you know the words, but you can't uh, create sentences. Why does that happen? Well, because you simply don't know yet what a natural correct Spanish sentence that a native speaker would use looks like, right? You have the ingredients, you have um, the recipe, but you don't know that it should look like this, the end result, right? And then you end up with something like this. That's what often happens when you learn a language do you just haven't heard or seen enough actual Spanish yet so you don't know what it would look like you often ask yourself like when you say something like oh was that correct Spanish is this what a Spanish native speaker would say or did I just make this up and this is often what you feel and I'm sure many of you also felt that way uh, when, when speaking Spanish and when that's the case when you don't know what a good sentence looks like you use the only frame of reference your brain already has, which is your mother tongue or maybe any other language, you know, probably English huh? or any other language. So you're just going to translate word for word from your mother tongue. You're going to use the structures from that, like your mother tongue. And that leads to mistakes. And these mistakes are sticky and they get imprinted on your brain. They literally fossilize. That's fossilization. And I just wanted to go through this whole explanation to show you that that's what always happens when you start learning a language purely through words and a lot of grammar rules and drills, because you'll always be inventing, um, you know, like a language yourself. And you don't have to, there is an alternative. You can do it a different way. 
you don't have to invent or reinvent Spanish at all, right? Because millions of Spanish native speakers are using Spanish every single day. They're already speaking Spanish. They're saying almost everything that you want to say or that you can say, um, they're already saying every single day. I mean, they're living their life through the language. So it only makes sense that they can express well, everything they want to express and that you want to express as well. And you can tap into their sentences, right? You could just say the same things. Right? You can tap into their sentences to sound more natural instantly. If you just listen very carefully in their conversations, you listen not just to understand what they say, but also how they say it, how they build their sentences, which exact word combinations they use uh, whenever they speak, how they create their sentences. And often you'll have an aha moment when you do that. Right? You listen to someone saying something in Spanish and you're like, oh, okay, that's how you say it. Right? And if you do that, nothing holds you back from saying the same thing yourself. And there will be no mistakes that can be imprinted and fossilized in your brain, right? Because you're actually hearing correct Spanish, natural Spanish that native speakers to use. And you don't have to guess if it's correct or not. You don't have to be, you know, like insecure about anything. You know it's correct because you heard a native speaker say it, right? And the only thing that gets imprinted in this way right? or gets fossilized if you want to um, is word chunks in correct natural Spanish. An extra benefit is of course that you don't need to know or remember all grammar rules while speaking. If you've heard and they speak or say something, you can just say the exact same thing. And I, this is all a bit abstract. I'll give you some examples of what I mean with, uh, with chunks and with listening to chunks, right? For example, hola, buenos dias. This is a very easy one. I don't know what the level is of everyone here um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the presentation or in the room. Uh, hola, buenos dias. Very, uh, very easy. Buenos dias, plural, buenos dias. How do you know it's good days in Spanish? How do you know it's plural if you only know words and grammar rules? Well, you can't. There's no grammar rule that says that in, in, in Spanish, you need to say, um, when you greet someone, uh, you need to say dias in the plural. There's no rule for that. It's just what native speakers do. And the only way to know that is by hearing it, right? And the only way native speakers know that they should do this is also because they've heard it so often from others and because they've said it so often, right? Native speakers also don't think about the word gender for dia. Is it el dia or la dia? Is mas masculine, feminine? Um, how do I need to, well, do you need to say buenos or bueno? And is it plural or singular? People don't think about that. They just speak. Why? Well, because it's a chunk, right? It's a pattern. It's something they've said so often, they've heard so often that it's imprinted on their brain. You might've heard of, uh, uh, the quote before, and neurons that fire together, wire together in your brain. That's exactly what happens with chunks or with language in general as well. You notice this in your mother tongue probably too, right? You don't think about grammar. You just hear something so often or you say something so often that just the neurons in your head fire together, they wire together as one whole, one unit of meaning in this case, buenos dias, right? Once you've heard a red or word combination like this, you can learn it by heart and you can start using it yourself, of course. Here's another example, odio los lunes. I hate, well, literally, I hate the Mondays. That's what native speakers say, right? How do you know? Well, you don't until you hear someone say that. Again, there is no, maybe there is a rule for this actually, but I don't know the grammar rule and I don't care because I know that a native speaker says this. So I just say the exact same thing, right? But if you don't do that, if you start by learning words and grammar rules, you probably might translate this from English. If you've never heard this before, you will say something like, oh, I hate Mondays. Okay, I need to say this in Spanish. So I will say, yo, uh, hate is odio, and then Mondays is lunes. Is there even a plural? It's probably the same. So you keep thinking all these things, and it's wrong. You will say, yo odio lunes, and that's not correct in Spanish. You need to say, los lunes. See? So that's how you learn with chunks, right? You always keep looking for these chunks, these word combinations that native speakers use, so you don't even have to think about the grammar. If you don't do that, the mistake would fossilize, of course, right? Just uh, to, to, to go back to uh, fossilization, we've talked about it in the beginning, uh, the mistake would fossilize and you keep saying it forever. So at this point, I don't know if you have any examples that you can think of yourself of, um, of, of chunks in Spanish. Uh, we'll get to more examples later, and we'll also give you a, like a full dialogue where we'll go through some of the of the chunks that are in there. But maybe you already uh, understand the 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 methods, and maybe there's something that you um, that you can think of already. If so, let me know in the chat, and I'll see. Um, maybe it's a good chunk. 
So yeah, again, you've heard audio los lunes now, you know it's correct, you heard it from me. I'm not a native speaker, but um, I mean, I've prepared this presentation, I know this is correct. So you can start saying it correctly too. <laughs> What about I hate Tuesdays? You see how you can extrapolate this, right? I hate Tuesdays. How do you think you say that? Audio, let's see, los martes, of course, right? So you can do the same thing here. You now know that it's I hate Mondays. Well, los martes is probably los, uh, los lunes. It's probably los martes too, right? So that's how this works. Can you see yourself saying this in your own life now? Of course, right? If someone asks you like, hey, do you, uh, which day and week do you like? You say, ah, odio los lunes. Yeah? You don't like uh, going to work or so. Um, and that's how it works. I'll give you some more example of chunks uh, in other languages too. I'll give you some in English here. I just to, 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 to give you a better idea of, of, of what chunks are and how you can uh, recognize them. And in a minute, we'll, uh, we'll see even more. In English, we say, how's it going? That's a good chunk. Come on, that's not a chunk. You catch a cab. Right? You don't jump a cab. You don't get on a cab. You don't. Well, you get in a cab, but you don't. You don't get get on a cab. Uh, you light a fire. You say, "By the way," huh? all of these units of, of meaning that that and, and these prefabricated uh, word units or word chunks are all a very good examples. See you soon. There's another one. Merry Christmas and Happy Birthday. These ones are interesting, actually. Right. Um, Merry Christmas, you can say in English. You can also say, well, in some parts of the world, um, Happy Christmas, right? That's something else you can, uh, you can say. Um, you can say Happy Birthday, but if you would say Merry Birthday to a native speaker, they'll probably look at you like, yeah, that doesn't sound right. And still, it's an adjective and a noun, right? There's nothing wrong grammatically with saying Merry Birthday, but nobody says it, right? So that's not a chunk. The other ones are chunks. I think by now you uh, understand what chunks are, right? You know, native speakers don't think about word, gender, or verb conjugations, just like you and your mother tongue don't think about these things. All of it is imprinted as patterns or chunks on your brain. So the chunks take care of the heavy lifting. And this is the main benefit of learning chunks. They take care of the heavy lifting when constructing sentences. You can just bypass all the grammar. That's that you don't even need it anymore there, right? Um, yeah, I see your explana explanation from Maritza, who explains uh, why it's audio los lunes, eh? because you have to say audio los días lunes, because I hate the days that are Monday, something like that. So that's why. Good thing is you don't need to know. You can just say audio los lunes, audio los martes, etc., without even knowing the explanation. That's the beauty of learning chunks. It's brain-friendly language learning, right? There is science behind this. I didn't invent this myself, the concept of chunking. Um, uh, Michael Lewis is a linguist who wrote a book about the lexical approach, which is all about chunking. If you're interested in, uh, in, in, in a, a bit more uh, linguistic theory, you might read that book. There's my own book, of course, but I mean, <laughs> that's, uh, I, I can't promote that one myself if I want to get authority. Uh, but Implementing the Lexical Approach is a very good book. Uh, my co-founder of Spring Languages, Gabriel Gelman, uh, did an interview with uh, Professor Stephen Krashen, which some of you might know. Uh, who is um, uh, yeah, the inventor of the, the, the input hypothesis. So he also believes that you should listen to a lot of Spanish or other languages to learn that language and that you like, absorb the structures, right? So he's another big proponent of, um, of getting a lot of inputs. Then there's Gianfranco Conti, which is also a linguist, again, for, uh, for people here who are uh, linguists. Um, uh, well, linguists that are interested in this might want to follow him. He has some interesting uh, stuff on, on Twitter. So he says, learning chunks instead of discrete words or word elements can often cover in half the time what is expected from a whole year of language learning. So you can also just well, expect to learn a language much, much quicker. And this is also what we see in our, in our courses. And sometimes it's even better than what the research suggests. So we have Brian here who learned uh, Spanish uh, with us a while ago. And he did a, a 90 day challenge for himself to learn chunks every day. And he says, in short, in the last three months, I've completed a normal year of studying Spanish. I can honestly say that I now can speak Spanish fluently. So that's amazing, right? Uh, in three months, he learned more Spanish than in the whole year before that, just by starting to learn chunks instead of words and grammar rules. So um, yeah, I hope you see the, the value of learning chunks now and, um, and, and then learning this way instead of uh, focusing exclusively on words and grammar. I'm not saying you shouldn't focus on grammar at all but at least uh, using these, uh, these chunks can help you a lot uh, with um, 
you know, with speaking more fluently, thinking less about grammar while speaking. You might be asking at this point, how do I use this to speak fluent Spanish beyond some of these isolated examples I use? Uh, I've shown you here, and that's where conversation-based chunking comes in, and that's what, uh, yeah, what I've been developing in the past um, couple of years. A method, a step-by-step -step method that you can use to just absorb chunks every single day, memorize them, and use them yourself in conversations. It's called conversation-based chunking. Um, four steps. First of all, you need to get input in a language. That makes sense, I guess. Uh, you need to hear Spanish. You need to hear native speakers speaking Spanish, otherwise you're never going to be able to, um, uh, to find any chunks in the first place, right? Second step then is to identify the chunks, to make an active effort to look for these chunks, uh, to look out for them, to have these aha moments where you think, oh, okay, so that's how you say it. I would have said it in a different way, maybe with words and grammar, like brain. Um, yeah, and then uh, the next step is to make an active effort to imprint these chunks on your brain, to memorize them in some way. So in step four, implement. Uh, you can actually put into practice everything you've learned, um, you can speak Spanish, use the chunks, and then impress native speakers. And that's step five that I sometimes add, <laughs> which you will if you use a lot of chunks. And then, of course, the cycle continues. And you get more inputs, you learn more chunks, you memorize them, you speak more, and so on. So that's how it goes. Input, identify, imprint, implement, and impress native speakers. So ready to take a shot at this. Yeah, we have uh, 10 minutes left. So I'm going to show you a, a lesson. Again, one lesson that you can download later on. Um, I'll give you the link at the end um, to show you even more examples. And that's, uh, I think that's something we can do in the, in the coming 10 minutes. Again, slides and resources available for download at the end of the presentation. So I'm quickly going to share my, um, wait, do a new share. Can you see this? Maybe write in the chat if you can now see a, uh, a PDF file. Yes, you can see, perfect. Thanks, Paula. So this is a lesson from um, one of our courses. I'll just go through it. And first of all, you see this is all, this is actually a dialogue. So you also get uh, MP3 audio, um, which you can listen to. So that's step one, the input, right? Try to find conversational input, dialogues. Don't go for, uh, newspapers or novels or something like that to find chunks because people don't speak that way. Right? They don't speak the way um, they write in, in like a specialized magazine or something like that. So try to really focus on, on conversational language dialogues. You can find it in courses. You can also find it in, in, in podcasts, in series. Uh, there are some good material on YouTube as well. You know, we have our own channel, so you can also follow these. Um, yeah, so that's, uh, that's step one, right? Inputs. So get good input like this here. Step two then is to make an active effort to find these chunks. So what I do usually is we add a parallel translation as you can see both and, um, and you can compare English and Spanish. And I'll just go through a couple of examples because we don't have that much time anymore uh, of chunks. Here, for example, hoy es jueves, uh, today is Thursday. Ah, no, lo siento, hoy es viernes. I'm sorry, lo siento, hoy es viernes. Literally, the, I feel, something like that, right? Does it make sense? Or it, I feel, actually. Does it make sense? Not really. In Spanish, it's I'm sorry. In English, it's I'm sorry. In Spanish, it's lo siento. How do you know you need to say that? Well, because you heard it in a conversation. And once you've heard it, you can just use it yourself, right? Another one here. Es mi día favorito. My favorite day. Mi día favorito. Literally, my day favorite. Why do you need to use that word order? Why does the favorito, why does it come behind día? Probably uh, one of you can probably give me uh, uh, the rule for that, but I don't care about the rule. Like I've no, I've seen this now. I know this is correct. It's, I know this is how you say it. So that's how I'm going to learn it. I'm going to memorize that and I'm going to use it myself. I'm going to say mi dia favorito without even thinking about the word order and also without the, um, if it's like masculine or feminine, el dia, I know it's masculine, um, but it doesn't really matter. So yeah, that's another one. Let's see. Escucho música. That's also an interesting one. Huh? I listen to music in the morning. I listen to music in English. In Spanish, there's no preposition. Escucho música. Escucho música. How do you know you don't have to add a preposition? Well, you don't unless you've heard it before, right? You've seen it somewhere in a dialogue. I listen to music in English. Probably you would translate word for word and you would be looking for like escucho a músico or a, a, a música or la música or... or or something like that, and you'll be like stuck on that because you don't know how to say that. Well, if you start by observing native speakers, you don't have to, right? A que hora is another one. At what time in English, in Spanish, 
at what hour? And you can say a que hora or a que horas, and both are correct, um, but you say hour, not the time. How do you know? Again, by finding chunks. That's how you do it. So you just go through dialogues or li listen to people speaking, or you go to, uh, you, you watch a Netflix series or something like that. And then you just see these things, you know, like these, these, um, these chunks or these sentences. And you think like, oh, okay, so that's different from what I would have thought it would be based on my knowledge of, of, of words and grammar and based on my frame of reference of the English language or another language, right? Um, so yeah. That's, uh, that's how you do it. And you just look for all of these things. And then, of course, it's important that you make an active effort to memorize them. That's step three. Uh, some of these, just by looking out for them and by having that aha moment of like, oh, that's how you say it, many of these will stick in your head already. Like you will just absorb them. It'll be like, okay, I remember uh, that at that point I, I had this aha moment about uh, lo siento or about escucho música, you're not, not going to forget that anymore, but it's a good idea to also make an active effort to, to memorize uh, chunks, and that really, for our students, makes a big difference. What we do is we create flashcards for all the lessons, so we always create flashcards with um, sentences, the full sentence where we found a chunk and we blank out a chunk, so what you would see is the, 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 all the columns on the left, yeah, these ones, these are the, the queries for the flashcards, and then the answer is on the right, and then your goal is that uh, you're um, to, you know, like memorize these and then review them and to get them all right. You know how flashcards works, uh, work, I guess. Um, but the, the, the good thing about these is that we add the whole context, right? There's a story you probably remember. Oh, yeah, this is from this Expo Lingua presentation where Lucas was explaining me that it's lo siento. Eh? I'm sorry. Uh, hoy es viernes. So you think about all these things because you see the sentence, you see the context. You don't just see a list of, of chunks or something like that. Um, uh, that's just a list and that doesn't have any context, right? So if you want to do this yourself, uh, you get access to these flashcards as well. So you have, an, uh, you have a, um, an idea of how to do that. You can make them physically you know, on a piece of paper or you can use an, an, an app like Brainscape like we do. There's also other apps where you can do it. Make sure to always add the full sentence, blank out a chunk so you have as much context as possible and this will help you a lot. And then just review every day, memorize some every day. If you do this for five to 10 minutes a day, it's what gives our students the best results, just because it's a small habit, but you're imprinting chunks on your brain, fossilizing them in a good way then. And uh, that makes a really big difference. And that prepares you for, um, you know, step four, where you go out and, and, you, and you actually speak Spanish and you use everything you've learned. So you use stuff like lo siento or I escucho música or buenos dias and anything else that we've talked about today. Um, and yeah, at that point, you will notice that everything flows so much easier, right? You're not thinking about grammar that much anymore. Um, uh, you will probably say things that are very natural and that you can't, like, they probably, some people will say, like, hey, how do you even know that we, that we say that in this way, right? Because you're observing, you're listening so much, right? You're not just focusing on words and grammar anymore, like most language learners. You're actually listening to what native speakers say, and you're saying the same thing. You're just repeating back to them in some way. And that often impresses native speakers, it really does. And, and it just makes you feel so much more natural and confident, um, almost like you're speaking in mother tongue, right? So yeah, wait, let me stop this screen share. Oh, no, stop both. Both, uh, let me go back to the this one. Yeah, so quick recap. Learning a language through word list and grammar rules leaves you tongue-tied and fossilizes your brain in a bad way, right? So to avoid fossilization and to have fluent Spanish sentences roll off the tongue, you should start absorbing chunks from real life Spanish. How? Four-step method, conversation-based chunking. Look for good inputs, conversational inputs. Identify chunks. Input these chunks on your brain and then use them yourself to speak, right? That's what it's all about. And I hope uh, if you, there's one thing that you take away from this presentation, um, it is that, that, that it really pays off to identify chunks, to look out for these chunks and to listen a lot to native speakers. Um, not saying you shouldn't learn any grammar anymore, but just learning these chunks will make everything so much easier for you. So yeah, um, if you want the slides and also the lesson that I showed you in an MP3 file and you wanna um, uh, maybe practice the flashcards, they also come with audio and you want to see like a model for what we do and you want to make your own flashcards, you can just uh, look at what we do. Um, you can go here. So there's a QR code and you can sign up there. Um, and you get uh, all the materials. I'll also post um, the link here. 
And yeah, thank you so much. I think it's, yeah, it's quarter to eight already where I'm, I don't know where you're in the world, but uh, yeah, we had 30 minutes, so <laughs> no more time for questions, I'm afraid. But if you have any questions, uh, again, go to that page, um, sign up and you'll get uh, my email address and uh, more than happy to, to answer any questions or to follow up with you um, or, or, or yeah, just talk about language learning or, or chunking or, or anything else.